everyone, I'm Morgan McLean. I'm the principal teacher for Nurture in North Ayrshire. And um, I'm just going to talk to you a little bit about what our approach is. It will sort of build on what we've been talking about all morning, that it's about relationships and positive approaches. And our, our sort of goal is to become a nurturing authority. And, um, so we're nurturing North Ayrshire. It's that idea that Gail was talking about, about having that whole universal approach, recognising that lots of children can experience barriers to, to learning based on ACEs or adverse childhood experiences. Um, and we want to have that universal approach. Just to give you an idea of the context, these are comments from some of the children in our infants' departments. Sometimes the work is too hard and it's too long and I'm tired and it's too boring, so I just want to go home. School is boring and I want to stay in my house. These were five-year-olds that said that. I think that's really quite heartbreaking, quite, quite shocking. What I would add to these, though, the, to complete them, is I like the nurture room and the cool stuff we do there. The other one, oh, it doesn't fill in, but it should also say, um, I like the nurture room and playtime. I even like it when it's somebody's birthday, which I quite like. I even like it. And that's our sort of approach. We've got this universal approach with whole school nurturing approaches. We used the, the training that Education Scotland developed and we trained every school in North Ayrshire. Um, all the head teachers came along for two days training and we asked the schools to identify early adopters and somebody from the early years classes and we rolled it out. Then the schools could go back and sort of say, well, what bit of this is relevant to us? What's our starting point? So they had detachment the brain stress and trauma modules and then the six principles of nurture modules. In addition to that, there's restorative approaches. It's kind of been rolled out training across the whole authority. The expectation is that, that schools will be using those approaches, using the five questions to meet any disagreements or distress behaviour. And there's a change in loss programme as well. Teachers have two days training, but what it is is five lessons that are given to children. Again, at that universal level, just talking about change in loss, there's about divorce, about bereavement. Kids tend to come and talk to you about, I'm a primary teacher, death of pets. But even in the secondaries, death of pets seems to be a big bereavement. It's the first bereavement children experience. It's quite interesting, the responses to that. We took a survey last May and then again this May. This is quite a busy slide. But what it's kind of highlighting is that, is that over the course of the year, the improvement in relationships that we've seen in this one specific school, but every relationship's improved in response to all the nurturing training, the restorative approaches training that we've been doing, relationships between the children, but also relationships between staff and other members, other staff members, and staff and parents and families. The work I'm most involved with, though, is the nurture groups. I know nurture groups are new. Um, Developed in London in the 60s, Glasgow have been working with them for about 10 years or more. Our director of education and our principal psychologist both came down from Glasgow a few years ago. So our raising attainment, part of our, part of our raising attainment is um, working in nurture groups. So across our nine secondary schools, we've got seven secondary nurture groups. They started in August this year. So they are just the beginning of their journey. We've got 20 primary nurture groups, 15 have been running for about 18 months. We've just added another five. And we're starting that nurture groups in the early years as well. Uh, we're at the point of recruiting our staff just now, so we'll see how they go. The PEF funded groups are quite interesting. Some of the schools, the, the nurture groups that are funded from the Raising Attainment Pot are all in the SIMD 1 and 2 areas, but some of our secondary, uh, primary schools sorry, are identifying that actually they've got needs. There's children who have experienced trauma who are not in SIMD 1 and 2. That kind of ideas of hidden poverty. One school in particular, they've got a lot of children living in foster families. So their children are coming in there, but they're not getting that funding because they're not identified by that way. And the school's responses to that are things like lunchtime clubs and friendship clubs. So everybody's buying into the kind of nurturing approaches, just trying to do it in a way that's manageable and within the school. The kind of rationale behind it, this is taken from that NHS document from last year. I'm just going back to this idea. It's about relationships. It's about safe spaces. It's about... Trust in adults, isn't it? One strong relationship with a trusted adult that you can come back to. And that's all that there is. And I think that's a really hard message. Um, we come, people come and they get that kind of compassion fatigue, but what next? What else is there? And it's coming back to that there isn't really. It's just counselling isn't going to work for very young children. It's about this one relationship. It's about us keeping going, keeping going, keeping smiling. And I know that that's really difficult for our staff. But I think we're getting there, we're doing it with some success. 
Identifying kids for the nurture group, we're using the box hall rather than going back and looking at ACEs. The box hall allows us to also use it as a planning tool. It identifies where those gaps are in learning rather than just what children's difficulties are. Like I said, our nurture group model is, is fairly standard. We work with six children, two adults, looking at skills such as sharing, turn taking, developing emotions, emotional regulation, all those basic skills needed for kids to eventually go on and develop good self-regulation skills. A well-being curriculum developed, delivered through play and activity-based learning, informed by the six principles of nurture. Gail showed you these earlier. What I thought was interesting is that the whole school level, people come into that, seem to come into nurture through that all behaviours communication, and that seems to be the thing that, that allows staff to really start to think about nurturing, this idea of understanding what children's behaviours communicating. Whereas within the nurtured groups, I think we go in through that learning is understood developmentally as a kind of entry point that what are, where are kids, where are their skills sitting? And I think the box hall kind of facilitates that. That what can kids do, what do they know, where are they? We're sort of looking at them, okay, they might be, the bodies of six-year-olds or 12-year-olds, 13-year-olds, but actually their skills, their emotional skills, their social skills are sitting about two and three years old. And how do we take that forward? This is an example of the data that we're using. This is our box hall data and analysis of this. I'm not very good with the hard data. Basically, we're reporting a significant shift so our, our interventions are working, but I'm more interested in the soft stuff. Um, so we're collecting, obviously, of pictures, quotations, uh, lots of questionnaires that have gone out to class teachers, to head teachers, to families and to the kids themselves. These wee people are here are um, engaged in a paths lesson, so they're really explicitly learning about friendships and explicitly learning about emotions. And that forms a lot of the work that we're doing in the nurture group. You can see in the background there's lots of uh, timetables and job rotas and things. So they've got that really explicit structure and routine to the day. Yeah. Here the kids are engaged in just some developmentally appropriate learning. They're, they're having a wee tea party, um, giving them the opportunity to talk to each other, to listen to each other, to turn to, to share. It's nothing new, is it? It's all the stuff that we know, but it's working. it is working for us. I like this picture here because it illustrates I've chosen it because it illustrates that actually the kids come with stuff. They're not, they can be that feeling sometimes that they're broken, there's trauma, there's adverse life experiences. But actually one of these kids was talking about going fishing with his grandpa. So we use that as the context for learning. You know, they come with good things, they come with positive experiences as well. And we need to build on those. The kids' comments, I think, speak for themselves in the success of our nurture groups. And our class teachers are noticing this as well, that the kids are making friends and they're settling into school life. But crucially, they're also seeing gains in, our, in their attainment and their literacy and numeracy. And kids are coming back in ready to learn. That's not true for all kids. Some kids need to go back in and go into learning support. They would probably need learning support anyway, possibly need learning support anyway. What we're doing, though, is we've got them at that point where they're ready to learn and they're really catching up and shifting. The parents are noticing that too. Parents are happy. Their kids are coming into school happy to learn, ready to learn. And because the parents are seeing that, what the parents are also reporting is better improved relationships at home. Kids are getting on better with their siblings, getting on better with their families. They're happier coming into schools in the mornings. The knock-on of that, of course, is that they're having better relationships with the schools. And we know that learn best learning takes place when schools and families can work together. The mum in the bottom there started out as one of those mums that comes into work at eight, work, comes into school, into the playground with her phone in her hand, really anxious, not able to engage with anybody else. She started out working with the nurture teacher, gained a wee bit of confidence, started volunteering in the school garden, school allotment. Now she's just joined the register to be on the supply list as a classroom assistant. So the nurture that's spreading beyond just the kids, it's affecting the families in a positive way as well. The comment I'd like to leave you with is this. I think this is the gold standard for job satisfaction. I love my job. I love the children who attend Nurture. They're all individuals with different requirements. They make me so happy to be part of their lives. They also teach me things for which I'm truly grateful for. And I think that's what's really important. It's about reciprocal relationships. It's about us getting from them, not just what we give them. It's about that joining together. I appreciate that was whistle stop and really, really fast. But I was conscious that I didn't have a lot of time, so I'm happy to take any comments or questions if you want to ask anything. Thank you.